One of the things, and we're talking about back to church, I hear a lot of times that people say, you know, I've got too many issues to go to church, you don't understand, those are good people, clean people, they got it all together, uh, there's never anything wrong with them and all the other things left and right. And may I say to you, that is absolutely false. Whoever tells you that in church we got it all together, has never been in the church. And I hear people all the time say, I'm looking for the perfect church, then don't join it because it then becomes imperfect. <laughs> because there is no one perfect in church, just Christ, okay? He's the only one, he's here, I understand that. But the rest of us are in body, he is in spirit, we are flesh, and so we got issues. And so one of the things that we need to understand is that as a church, as a group of body of believers, we've got to learn how to accept each other. With their quirks, with their issues. And in doing so, we gotta learn how to treat each other as if they were Jesus. That's hard. You rub me the wrong way. I don't like the way you look at me when I preach. <laughs> and, and sometimes we need to understand that a church is like a hospital. Not everybody in that hospital has the flu. Not everybody in there needs a lung transplant or a heart transplant or a knee replacement or a foot replacement. Some of them are in there for other different issues. But they all got issues. Now some hospitals are good at treating certain things. Most churches are good at treating one thing. I, um, I live right by a church, and they just got a new pastor. Now, when I would go by this church and I would see their sign, it would always have a nice, quirky, religious saying. Like, um, what's missing in CH underscore RCH, and it would be, you are, okay? You all seen that sign, right? And you've seen all these other signs. They don't do these anymore. I sit there and from the time I come from around the corner going by that sign, I will see three different things that they got going. Uh, late, ladies um, crafts, men's Bible study, youth um, splash down, and this and this and this. And I figured out, I know what they're good at. They're good at socializing, grouping everybody together with this new pastor. And they're going to get a lot of people because people are going to look and say, oh, they got something for kids. They got something for youth. They got something for women. They got something for men. They got something for couples. They got something for this. They've got something for that. All of these things they've got. And people are going to say, hey, cool. That's what I'm looking for. I've got this issue. I'm going to go to that church. They what? They don't have me? No, no, they don't have me. No. And, it, and it's just, what do you do? And, and, the, and the issue is this. 
When we come together as, as a body, we need to learn that we, we're going to have to treat each other like Christ. And, and sometimes, let me say this to y'all, it's hard for me to do that. I'm imperfect too. And sometimes you'll get under my skin. And sometimes you'll irritate me. And then I'll walk away. And I'll be fine. But there's a story of, of, a, of an elderly lady. She was kind of disheveled, shoveled. She was a cleaning woman, and she visited a church one day. When the invitation was given at the end of the service, she went forward telling the church that she wanted to become a member of that congregation. So the preacher listened to her as she said how she had accepted Christ, and, and she wanted to be baptized. The preacher thought to himself, Oh my, she is so unkempt. She smells. Her fingernails, they're not clean. She picks up garbage. She cleans toilets. What would the members think of her? So he told her that she needed to go home and pray about it for a while before she was baptized. So the following week, here she came. During the invitation, she told the preacher. She prayed about it. She still wanted to be baptized. And again, the preacher told her, ma'am, you need to go home. You need to pray some more. So a few weeks later, while they were out eating in the restaurant, the preacher saw this little old lady. And he didn't want her to think that he was ignoring her. So he walked over to her, and here's what he said. You've not been back to church for a while. Is everything all right? Oh, yes, she said. I talked to Jesus, and he told me not to worry about becoming a member of your church. We did, preacher, a little shock said. Oh, yes, she replied. Jesus said even he hasn't been able to get into your church, and he's been trying for years. And unfortunately, may I say to you, that is absolutely a correct statement. Jesus has been trying to get into a lot of churches for years, and he hasn't even made it in the door. Amen. It's become a club. It's become a social hour. You talk to people about today, about sharing their faith, about Jesus, and you know what they say? What are you talking about? What do you mean, share my faith? Well, tell somebody about Jesus. Oh, I do that all the time. I tell them every time I see him, Jesus loves you. And so do I. I'll see you next week. Really? Yeah, that's, that's what I say. So here's the question. Do you think that Jesus would be welcome at Calvary Baptist Church? Now, I like to think that we're a pretty welcome and accepting church. And I hope and pray that we are. But let me say this to y'all. We can't experience a real Christian community until we're able to accept each other. You see, here's the wrong impression. How many of you all got to choose what family you were born into? How many of you all, before you were born, looked at God and said, God, that's the one I want to, that's the family right over there I want to go to. I want to be born to the Queen of England. The Prince of Wales or Queen Mary of Scotland, I don't know. Or I'd like to be married or born into this family. Did anybody get that decision? No? 
I don't think so. Because I've never heard anybody been able to answer that in the affirmative before. <laughs> well, but church membership is different, they say. Well, what do you mean? I can choose what church I want to go to. And that is absolutely correct. You can. You can choose to go to whatever church you want to go to. But that's the wrong answer. I choose to go to the place that God wants me to go. Not where I want to go. You see, maybe I want to go to the big church over here because I can get buried in that crowd. And I, I won't ever know. And the preacher won't even know whether I've been there or not. I could meet him out in the, in the, in the neighborhood and he wouldn't even know who I am. I'm just somebody else. But what happens is this. The Bible tells us to spend time with each other. And so what we need to understand is exactly what God is trying to tell us. Romans chapter 15 and verse number 7 says this, Therefore accept one another just as the Messiah also accepted you to the glory of of God. What do we need to understand is some of these words and what do they mean? When, when we look at the word accept, what it means is to receive someone kindly or to treat them with hospitability. Hus hospitality. Hospitality, that's the new word of the week. So let me ask you this question. And sometimes I have to ask myself the same question. The way I just treated that person is that the same way I want them to treat me. And sometimes I have to go back and say, I blew that one. I didn't do it right. God, I really, really messed up. For instance, thing in school today, bullying, right? Kids all over are bullied. My wife, my wife was telling me, um, was it Dr. Oz you were watching? Were they? Dr. Phil. Dr. Phil. This little boy. And this friend of his, supposed to be his friend, kept bullying him and bullying him. And finally, he took the boy sexually molested him for 45 minutes, bashed his head in, and buried him. That was a friend. You know how many kids in school think they have friends? And then all of a sudden, all over social media, words are said about them. Things are done. You know how many kids today commit suicide? at the age of five and six because they're being bullied in school? And we say, that is absolutely amazing. Where in the world do these kids get this stuff? Look at Facebook, ladies and gentlemen, from people who are supposed to be adults. Trashing one another. They're called Republicans and Democrats. Conservatives and liberals. <coughs> Again, look, it's getting ready for a political season. And how many political ads do you see? I, I, I find this amazing. I've got one candidate who gives me one commercial, followed by the next candidate that gives me the other commercial. 
and listen to what they say. So and so, here's what they, all they want to do to you. All they want to do, all they want to do. Here's what they've done, here's what they've done. And then they go over here and this guy follows up with what this guy said that this guy did. We're filled with it. And the question is, it follows over in the church. Because the question arises where he says, accept one another. Just as Christ has accepted you in order to please God. The question we need to ask ourselves sometimes is, are we pleasing to God? If someone came in here that clean toilets, dirty fingernails, not dressed properly, what would you do? What if they sat next to you? Would you move? Or do you know how much the person sitting next to you is hurting? We don't. What this word accept means to welcome in the broadest sense. Unconditionally. It means to receive wholeheartedly, to warmly welcome to yourself, to grant admission into your heart, to look beyond anything superficial and be willing and open to build relationships. It's hard to get into a relationship and build a relationship if you don't let someone in. And sometimes we need to understand that accept one another means to welcome someone who is different than you. Let me say this to y'all. I have no clue how many people are here today, but none of you are the same. You're all different. And I'm glad that you are not me. And I am glad I am not you. I am glad that I am different and you are different because we learn from each other. If you all were like me, I wouldn't need you. And if I was like you, you wouldn't need me. Accepting people who are different. Isn't that what Christ did? Christ didn't just say, I'm only going to accept these people because they look like me. I'm only going to accept these people because they act like me. Christ accepted them all. It didn't matter what they looked like or what they did. That is the most wonderful thing about Christ. May I say to you, Satan may keep reminding you of what you used to be and what you were doing, and Christ is trying to tell you you're not that person anymore. I can help you. I can change you. This is why he says that he makes us a new creature. We talk about a heart transplant, but it's a renewing of the mind. It's changing our thoughts from what they used to be to what he wants them to be. For instance, you may come here today not knowing Christ and hate your job. Come to the altar today get saved, get in a relationship with Christ, and go in to work on Monday morning singing and everybody looking at you like, what in the world are you on? <laughs> when you left out of here on Friday, you were the most angry, hateful person we had ever met. And my question is, what happened? Where did you go? You've been changed. Can you tell me where you got that stuff from? <laughs> yes, I can tell you exactly where I got it from. Does it come in a bottle? It comes in a cup. How much do I have to drink? All of it. Well, what if I drink all of it? There's, you're never going to run dry? Because he says, my cup runneth over. And when that runs over and you've drank that, i got plenty more to go. I've got a fountain that you'll never thirst again from. What you talking about? 
you're weird. Yes, I have become peculiar. Why? Because I met someone this weekend that I've been looking for all my life. I thought you were already married. I am, but I just found someone to help complete all of this. Really? Who is he? He's Jesus. You're crazy. Yep. Because he's changed. He's changed me. And he's showed me how to accept people that aren't like me anymore. And guess what? I love you. And then they're going to call somebody to come get you. Because now you're acting strange. But what is... What is the key phrase in this verse? The key phrase in this verse is, therefore accept one another just as the Messiah also accepted you. The key verse is this. What's our standard? That's why somebody asked, they always ask me this question. What is the dress code for your church? I said, the only th requirement that we have is that you show up with clothes on. That is the only requirement. You, you mean if the only thing that I've got is a pair of pajamas? Come on. And if you need some clothes, we'll help you get some clothes. What if I don't have any shoes? Come on. What if? What if? What if? You know what I say? Come on. Come on. That's what you just need to learn. That expression. When somebody says, what if? Just say, come on. Come on. Just come on. I'll be there waiting for you when you come in the door. Come on. Remember when some of y'all grew up in Kentucky? Or Texas, Arkansas. It's a southern expression. When someone would knock on the door, what they'd say? Come on in. Y'all. Come on. Just come on, y'all. Come on, y'all. Come on, y'all. This is what Jesus is trying to tell us when he says, I accept the standard. The standard is this. He's saying to you, saying to me, come on, y'all. Just come on. What are you waiting for? Open the door. Just come on. He's our, extent, our standard. And what did he say? How did Christ accept us? He said, while we were yet sinners, he loved us. Amen. May I say something to y'all? Y'all the nastiest people I ever met in my life. I'll go to another church and tell them the same thing. Why? We were all sinners. And somebody had to clean us up. You may have been covered up on the outside with some good looking clothes. And you may have had a great education. Well, may I say this something to you? The Bible says that your righteousness is as filthy rags. You need to look it up. We always think we're so good, we're so great, we're so wonderful. And Jesus is saying, while you were sinners, I loved you. It doesn't matter how low you thought you were. He said, I still love you. It doesn't matter how great you think you are. He still loves you. And he always will. We need to understand that it is Jesus' nature to love the unlovable. And there are times that I have probably been one of the most unlovable person in the whole world. And I know you might think that that's very difficult for y'all to believe. That this big teddy bear could be so unlovable. 
I would have cussed you out. I would have told you to go somewhere. I would have told you to get out of my face. And I was supposedly a Christian. I was the most miserable Christian that you've ever seen on the face of the earth. As Paul says, I was probably the chiefest of all sinners. And he wasn't proud of me. I know that. But Jesus said this. He says, listen, there's a new command that I give you. And he says, that is love one another as I have loved you. So you must love one another. And by this, all men will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. How do I know that you're a Christian? If you love one another. If you don't, you need to check something. Something ain't right. Dr. Larry Crabb, in a book called, that he wrote in Connecting, he wrote this. He says, what every Christian can pour into another is a powerful passion of, of acceptance, a passion that flows out of the center of the gospel, and a passion that fills the heart of God. Today we ask you all to wear your sports clothes. I know the Cincinnati Reds almost made it to 100 losses this year. Man. And I know Cleveland finally won a game in two years. <laughs> it may be the only one they win. I don't know. And the Bengals are two and one. And most people are expecting them. Don't clap yet. I have to say this out of the pulpit. I, <laughs> odds maker have them losing today, by the way, to Atlanta. And there's reasons for it, people hurt and all these things. Okay, so anyway, I, I'm not an odds maker. I'm just saying that that's what they say. I'm not betting. I would never bet on the Bengals anyway. Okay? I never bet on anything because I, I can't do any of those things. So here's, here's what we need to do. And I told you I, I would finish. Um, okay. We need to learn how to accept one another. That's what church is. Back to church. Why back to church? Because maybe you're afraid that if they ever found out what I have done, they wouldn't accept me. May I say this to you as sincerely as I can. If any church ever found out what you did and they don't accept you, they are not a church. Can't be. Because the example of Christ says this. There was a guy one day <coughs> who sent his soldiers into battle and stayed home. This man was supposed to be on the battlefield with the soldiers. But he stayed home. Wrong thing. It's the middle of the day, and he decides, well, I wonder how the battle's doing. I, I need to go up to the rooftop and see what's happening. And he goes up to the rooftop, and there's a young lady up there bathing. His eyes did not turn away, but they stayed fixated on her so much that he lusted for her. So much that his heart was burning for her. And he was a man of God. So he sent his servants 
go over to that lady over there at that house and tell her that the king wants her. They did, and she came. Because if the king ever sent for you, you must go. The king seduced her, and got, she got pregnant. And the king began to contrive a plan. I can't let her husband know that she did this. So you need to go send for her husband and bring him back so he can be with his wife. He came back. He said, you need to go with your wife. And he says, no, I can't. My soldiers are out there on the field and I must stay out here while they're there. He wouldn't do that, so the king had to come up with another plan. So, okay, if he won't do that, put him on the front line so he'll die. He did. The gentleman died. The king married the woman, and they had a baby. The baby got very sick, and the baby died. You think about it for a minute. This guy killed people. He lied, and 300 people died in battle because of his lie. So my question is, have you done that? But if I read the scriptures, the scripture says that this man is a man after God's own heart. Does that mean that everything he did was right? No. It means that God will take everything that he did that was absolutely wrong and say, hey, you still can be great by following my lead. And he did. Matter of fact, he wrote a lot of the books of Psalm. Matter of fact, it was out of his lineage out of his tree that Jesus was born. There was also another person in that tree who was a lady by the name of Rahab who was a prostitute. When you start following, you want to talk about gene <laughs> genealogy? You need to go look at the genealogy of Christ. Honey, it was not priests all over the place. There were some shady characters in there. And there's probably some in yours too. My mom always told me that I probably had some that were hung because of things they did. We need to understand so let me say to you this. There are some times that you need to learn how to accept one another. And no matter who walks into this church, they're acceptable. Because because I'll make you a promise. And that is this. If a person walks in this door who is drunk, inebriated, would you welcome them? Or would you be like some of the other churches and say, I'm sorry, but <laughs> you're interrupting the service? You got to leave. If somebody walked in here and they didn't smell too good, what would you do? You 
sat in her own place. Oh, man. Is that what you would do? Or you would look and you would do something like this, move to another spot. You know what that tells that person? You're not welcome here. You're, you're still welcome. <laughs> Good seeking, man. Because let me say this to y'all. If you ever do that, I'm walking because I'm not welcome here. And I'm telling you the truth. Because if you can't accept anyone, you can't accept no one. We need to learn, because let me tell you something. There's going to be some of those people coming through these doors. There's people out on these streets that are looking for someone to love them. They want someone that's honest. There's a lot of churches out here that do a lot of stuff to build numbers, but they don't really love the person. We ain't building numbers, we're loving people. And God's sending a lot of people this way that are hurting. And it's our obligation and our responsibility to help them. Because let me say this, there's coming a time when you're going to hurt. And you're going to need somebody. And the way that you treated, I think the old saying is, what goes around comes around. You may be on the other side wanting someone to love you and finding there is no one because you decided you didn't want anyone. That is why I say to you, you belong. I don't care who you are. I don't care what you've done. You belong. You belong. This is not my house. This is not your house. This is God's house. And he's just letting us borrow it for a little while. Just like this. I only borrowed this for a little while. Thank God that I don't have to put up with this through all eternity. I get tired of the eyes and not being able to see. I get tired of the feet not being able to walk and the tongue and not being able to talk right. I just want God to say, well done. So this morning, my question is to you this. Here's your invitation. If you don't know Christ, come to get to know him. If you've never met him, we'll introduce you. If you want to know what happiness is, it's knowing the Lord. Does that mean that everything's going to work out? I'll guarantee you it won't. Will you have problems and issues? I will absolutely tell you for certain, 100%, you will have issues, you will have problems. They may be worse once you get saved. And you say, now why are you wanting me to do that? Because at the end of this life, they're all gone. Amen. But if you don't know Jesus, let me tell you this. You think you got problems now? Honey, where you're going, you got worse problems. And they don't go away. They will be there right in your face. And you can't escape. There's no place to go and no place to move. You're like a bunch of sardines crammed into a space hurting and no no relief or maybe you're here and you've been saved and you want to come into this church by baptism by letter by statement come it's your invitation let's stand together would you hello this is pastor chuck cotton from calvary baptist church first of all i'd like to say thank you very much for taking the time out to either listen to our sermon or to watch it on video we are grateful that you've actually taken the time and hope and pray that it has been a blessing to you as it was to us as we delivered it to our congregation. We ask if you have any questions whatsoever that you email us at pastorchuck 
at calvarybaptistmiddletown.org. Or you could come in and give us a phone call, if you would please, at area code 513-423-7251. I'd like to take this opportunity to also invite you to come to our church and visit us, if you would please. We actually have small groups on Sunday morning starting at 9.30 with our morning worship following at 10.45. Prior to our morning um, small groups, we also provide donuts, with coffee, um, milk, orange juice, a time for fellowship, get to know each other, have a good time before we actually break out into our small groups for Sunday. Our worship services are uplifting, they're fast moving, and everything in our service is just a fast pace. But we do take time every once in a while to slow down as we feel the Holy Spirit moving, and we never want to hinder it in any way. We also have on Sunday evening, during the school year, we have Awana, and Awana starts with the Puggles, actually from age two all the way up through high school. And during that period of time, we also have a worship service. Both of these start at six o'clock and end at 7.30. Our Wednesday night, we have a Bible study, which starts at seven. We generally finish about 8.15. We would love for you to come and visit with us. Don't have to dress up, just come as you are, because to us, it doesn't matter. You're, you're a child of God, a creation of His, and so to us, you're important to everything that we do. Our motto here is building the kingdom one life at a time, and we hope that we have a chance to visit with you, get to know you as you get to know us. So thank you, and may God bless you.